Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we are going to be talking about pendulums. And we're going to be talking about how they move, what's the velocity, what are they actually dictated by, their kinetic and potential energy. We got a nice little graph for us to go over as well. So pendulums are an approximate simple harmonic motion. Uh, they do not actually equal a full-blown simple harmonic motion uh, for a few reasons. Uh, the most easiest to understand is that um, there's going to be some friction. So if you, if you move this ball up here, it would go down, and then in theory it should go all the way back up, but it's going to be just a little bit less than it was before because of friction and other forces as well. The restoring force of a pendulum gets confusing. But the main thing is that with AP physics, we use them as a simple harmonic motion, which indicates that in theory it could do this forever. It could just go back and forth and back and forth forever, and it just rotates back and forth. Rotates, oscillates, oscillates back and forth. Oscillations, all right? So what we're going to go through is this idea of why it does that, what's happening when it does that, how the kinetic energy and the potential energy are flipping back and forth over and over again as well. So um, in order for it to start, a pendulum's motion to start, one will have to move the ball or the pendulum up, either to the right or to the left, but we're starting to the right. And after that moment, if it is released, not pushed, released, it is going to start moving and following that curve downward. All right, so at this point right here, the time is zero. It is the furthest to the right, and we are not moving. And if you're not moving, you have no kinetic energy, and the potential energy is at its maximum, okay? But as it starts moving downward, once we get to here, it's going to continue moving to the left. Um, and it is going to be one-fourth of its entire cycle. So we have like a lot of different cycles here. It's divided into like periods, quite literally, the period of a pendulum. We're going to get to that in a moment. So as it approaches here, its velocity is moving at, at the fastest it's going to be in the left direction. And therefore, its kinetic energy is now at its maximum value. So as it's going down here, it's gaining speed, gaining speed, gaining speed all the way down because gravity causes acceleration to things to speed up. So as it's going down, it's moving down into the left, and at this moment, it's the fastest it's going to get in the left direction. And then from that moment, it starts speeding, uh, excuse me, slowing down or decelerating in the left direction because it would really like to go back the other way. Okay, at this moment, after it reaches here, it is going to stop, and then it's going to be changing directions, because technically, it had been converting all of this leftward energy into gravitational potential energy, and now it's about to switch directions. So at this moment, it is not accelerating, or excuse me, it's not moving in velocity. It's the furthest it is to the left. It has a kinetic energy of zero, and its potential energy has maxed out, and it's just going to change directions. It's going to be, it's moving this direction now, and then it's going to move there until it reaches its max height on this side, which means the kinetic energy will equal zero, and the potential energy will equal its maximum as well. So the acceleration is kind of difficult to understand, because you'd think that it, it, it's accelerating due to gravity, it would be constant, but it's actually not constant for many reasons. It's a lemon peel. I walked around for a bit uh, and had to think about it, um, it's gravity is the same, okay? But the direction of it is changing, and the amount of energy that is produced is because there's an angle here is going to actually be different. Gravity will be affecting it differently throughout. Therefore, the acceleration will be different throughout. It's a little bit easier to think of it in terms of um, the direction to the left and to the right in terms of acceleration. So here, the acceleration is as much as it's going to be in the leftward direction as possible. And then at this point, we are done moving in the leftward direction. We are going to still move in the leftward direction, but it's going to decelerate. It's going to start changing and wanting to accelerate the opposite direction. That's why over here I originally kind of wrote a right arrow. So at this moment, all of the kinetic energy is being converted into potential energy, but it wants, it's wanting to go the opposite direction because gravity... As it gets to right here, it's going to want to pull it backwards. And over here, it's going to really want to pull it backwards. And over here, it's going to really want to pull it backwards. So as it gets to this point, it is done accelerating in the left direction, and it was going to switch to starting to decelerate, which indicates that it is going to move it to the right. 
want to move it to the right. It's not actually going to accomplish it. It's a lemon peel. That's why I left it blank, because I figured it would confuse people. Um, another thing that confuses people is this formula. The formula is not confusing. The period of a pendulum is equal to 2 pi, which makes sense, the radius of a circle, things like that, divide, and then multiplied by the square root of the length of the string divided by gravity. Now, here's the cool thing here that a lot of people don't pay attention to. The period is how long it takes it to complete one cycle. Period. For how long it takes it to complete one cycle from here and then back. Okay? So that is the period. That's what the T represents. L is the length of the string, and G is gravity. 10 meters per second, 9.8 meters per second, whatever your teacher prefers. Um, I go back and forth. So notice what is not on here is an angle. There's no angle. It does not matter if you were to pull this guy back this amount versus a slightly shorter amount or even an even, even slightly shorter amount. That pendulum will have the exact same amount of time for it to complete one cycle, which is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. The amount of time that it takes for it to complete one cycle is not dependent on the angle in which it is extended from. And that is due to the fact that it will have more time to gain speed and then come back down. All right? So neat, fun fact, it will be determined by the length of the pendulum, though. All right? So the shorter it is, the less time it would take for it to go whoop, whoop, right back and forth versus if it was really long. I'm thinking of like those big uh, sailboat rides at uh, Bush Gardens or something. If it was a really long string, it would take a long time for it to go back and forth because gravity can only affect it so much. All right. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, everybody, stay positive. In the next one, we're going to actually deal with the problems and do some examples. I will see you then. Bye.